This is Yersinia pestis. Actually, this is Yersinia pestis as it looks under a microscope. A harmless looking fellow, this tiny bacterium is about 2 micrometers long and half a micrometer wide and is not modal. This bacterium's gentle appearance hides its reality of being a savage killer of humans and one of the most devastating pathogens in human history. Yersinia pestis has plagued humankind from prehistoric times. The DNA of this bacterium was found in a human skeleton dating back to 5,000 years ago. But the evidence of plague taking a heavy toll on human populations began with the first plague pandemic which started in the year 540. This pandemic originated in Ethiopia, moved through Egypt, and spread into southern Europe in 541. At its height, this plague was killing 5 to 10,000 people per day. By the time this plague subsided in the year 546, it is estimated to have killed more than 100 million people. The next major plague pandemic started in 1347. This plague would later be called the Black Death due to the fear and destruction it brought to human populations from Asia through Europe. Over a six-year period, this plague killed about half of the European population and about one-third of the people living in the Middle East. In 1665, Yersinia pestis traveled to England and started the Great Plague of London. By the following year, more than 100,000 people were killed. The Third Great Plague pandemic started slowly in a remote part of China. It gradually spread from there, reaching Hong Kong in 1896. It was there that the bacterial cause of this disease was discovered. From Asia, it then spread to Australia, India, and Africa. In the end, more than 12 million people died, with the great majority of deaths occurring in India. While studying plague in Hong Kong in 1895, physician Alexander Yersin discovered the bacterial cause of plague. He named it Pastorella pestis, but the name was later changed to Yersinia pestis in his honor. Plague is a zoonotic disease, which means it moves from animals to humans. It is also a vector-borne disease, being transmitted to humans by a smaller animal parasite. The most common animal carrier of plague is the rat, and the vector of transmission is the flea. During the first and second pandemics, this mechanism was not known. Rats commonly carry fleas and rats were attracted to cities where they fed on human food and trash. Rats also easily got aboard ships which carried them, their fleas and Yersinia pestis around the world. A flea which feeds on a rat infected with Yersinia pestis get the bacteria into its gut. When the bacteria grow within the flea, they cause a blockage of the gut. So, when the flea bites a new host such as a human, the flea regurgitates the bacteria into the host's skin tissue. After a human is bitten by a flea, the Yersinia pestis bacteria travel through the lymphatic system and cause egg-sized swellings called buboes to occur in the groin, armpits, and other sites. The appearance of buboes is why this type of plague is called bubonic plague. Along with buboes, the infected person experiences a high fever and terrible pains in their limbs and abdomen. About 60% of the infected people die within a week after the onset of these symptoms. During the Black Death pandemic, doctors thought the plague was being transmitted by miasma or poisonous vapors in the air. To protect themselves when treating plague patients, these doctors wore head-to-toe robes with a bizarre mask that had a bird-like beak. This beak was packed with herbs to block the smell and protect the doctors from the supposed poisonous vapors. If Yersinia pestis gets into a person's lungs, it can cause a different form of the disease called pneumonic plague. Pneumonic plague causes lung damage and coughing which allows the bacteria to be transferred person to person. If untreated, the disease progresses to coughing mucus and blood and finally death. Prior to the antibiotic era, if a person got bubonic plague or pneumonic plague, the most likely outcome was death. After Yersin's discovery of the bacterial cause of plague and how it was transmitted by fleas carried by rats, effective interventions to stop the spread of plague were developed. 
Improved sanitation and rat eradication programs help sever the most common route of transmission of Yersinia pestis into humans. In the 1940s, antibiotics first became available for treating of bacterial diseases. With the advent of antibiotic therapies, the overall death rate from plague fell from 66% to 13%. Local attempts were made to eradicate plague entirely, but due to the large number of animal hosts and the difficulty of eradicating all rats, these attempts were unsuccessful. However, the incidence of plague both locally and globally have dropped dramatically since the 1950s. Today, Yersinia pestis can still be found in rats and other rodents, squirrels, prairie dogs, marmots, ferrets, and some other mammals that come into contact with these animals. Cats can become infected, and there are a few documented cases of cats transmitting plague to humans. Now, thanks to science, large outbreaks of plague no longer occur. Globally, about 2,000 new cases of plague are reported annually, with most occurring in Madagascar and Eastern Africa. In the U.S., there have been no more than 17 cases of plague per year reported in the past 50 years, with most of these occurring in the Southwest. While plague has become a minor human health threat in recent times, a new threat of plague has emerged. Due to the misuse of science, plague has the potential of being weaponized and used for bioterrorism. Since Yersinia pestis that is inhaled in droplets can cause deadly pneumonic plague, it is possible that a weapon could be built that sprays an aerosol containing this bacteria over a large population. So, while historically rats and fleas were the main source of plague transmission into humans, we are now our own biggest threat. The combative nature of humans has become the new rat in the transmission path of plague.